Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to Live with Jerry T. I'm Dave Betancourt with Gerald Tillinghast. Hello, Jerry. How you doing, people? Um, so uh, what you just saw, let's just watch it again real quick. All right, go ahead, tell yeah, us. That was a, a quick view of what was the Hudson Furs, which was the bonded vault. And uh, that was the building that was uh, the seat of the robbery. Mm -hmm. And we'll get further yeah. into it as we go along. But uh, oh yeah, let's let's before we jump in, let's let's talk about January 1976. You're in your house on Chalkstone Ave in Providence. Yeah. You're with your six year old son, Jerry Jr. Tell me what happened. I think it was six or seven, yeah. Yeah. Well, what happened was we're downstairs and uh, putting a pool table together. I was going to teach them how to sew a pool. Oh, nice. Uh, we're doing that. We get the table up. It was a good slate. It was a good table. And mm -hmm. uh, when the people come in, they put it in, set it up, and I was going to get him and show what to do. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was my wife, Terry, said, Jerry, I said, yeah, I says, boy, there's a lot of cops out here. I said, where? I said, well, maybe yeah. something happened, you know? Uh, they said, no, they're around our house. Now they're coming in and they have guns. <laughs> right? So I said, so who gives a fuck, right? So they come in and they come down the stairs like this. Now, Jerry, my son, mm -hmm. he's there. And I, I went off on him. I said, put them fucking guns up. You're going to scare mm -hmm. my fucking kid. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What the fuck do you want? You got a warrant? What, why are you in here? And mm -hmm. Shit like that. So I was swearing at him all the way out. All the way up to the fucking They door. had a warrant for your arrest? Yeah. It was a secret indictment. Did you go out in cuffs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. They never, they always cuff me. What's a secret? In, oh, yeah? Yeah. Secret indictment is where uh, the grand jury convenes, hmm. and you're not called in. You don't know about it. And they present, the state The state presents the case, and, 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 they, and they lie like bastards anyway, hmm. the prosecutors. They hmm. want to get that case. And hmm. they present it to the grand jury, hmm. and they decide, well, okay, yeah, you got enough to go forward with a trial. Mm -hmm. So we don't know about it at times. So what happens is after that happens, they make out uh, an indictment and I bring the paper and I go and, so, and that's it. It's a secret indictment. Okay. Uh, so so January 1976, the police show up at your house and now- No, 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 no. Yeah, right. I'm and now that. you're in you're in jail throughout the trial, which lasts- Eight and a half months. Eight and a half months. Yeah. Okay. So let's w rewind a little bit though. Let's go now to August 14th, 1975, allegedly at 8.15 in the morning. The police, I'm going to give you what the police think happened. The police believe that, oh, actually, let me, before that, let me read to you a great little description of what the bonded vault was. Okay. So this is from Gerard Wimet. You know, Jerry Wimet. Right. You knew Gerard Wimet. You knew him very well. Explain to the people who don't know Gerard Wimet. Uh, I can say who he was, but it might be better to hear it from you. Why would I want to do that? I uh, okay. Well, because we're telling stories, and it'd be good to set up all the characters yeah, in the story. You, you can, but you know, uh, he was uh, the head of the the, the the crew we were in. Head, head of the crew. Now, yeah. Okay. The main crew, though, was Raymond Patriarchas. No, nope, we're not getting into that part. We're not. Label anything like that. All right. I don't know who it was. Don't, okay. Don't start your shit. All right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, okay. we, we Gerard and uh, so Gerard was like a leader. Yeah. He was a good man. No. In your eyes, no, he was not a good man in your no. eyes. Yeah, he was all right. We were friends. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But he was not a good guy in, in the world of good guys and bad guys. And that in that world, I don't know if there are any really any good guys because everybody. Wants to shoot each other and stuff like that. That's not a, that guy, that's not a good guy attitude. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, it doesn't seem. The only like good much. guys was the win inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Gerard Wimet is the leader of this crew, uh, and he's a good friend of yours. Um, and he is in he, he's in jail at this point in uh, 1975. Yeah. Um, and in, in his book, he wrote a book uh, after uh, his time. What price Providence? What price Providence is called? Uh, yeah. Uh, the, you can get it on Amazon. The Frenchman. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to read you a little. Uh, this is what. He said was the Hudson Furs. This is what the Bonded Vault was. Uh, the Bonded Vault was actually Hudson Furs to the general public. Quote, but to the mob, it was the candy jar. What it amounted to was boxes that were used by all the bookmakers and anybody else that was plugged into the mob in Rhode Island and Maine. What which kind I of think, boxes? What do you mean boxes? 
he says uh boxes what what it, what it amounted to was boxes that were used by all the bookmakers and anybody else that was plugged into the mob in rhode island and maine now I, i'm i'm guessing it would have been rhode island to maine because i doubt the mob operated only in rhode island and maine the mob operates all over the fucking country. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Guys used to gamble all week and on Monday meet at the cleaners where two Jews would be hanging around drinking coffee. They would go to their respective boxes. I'm guessing he's meaning uh, 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 bank boxes. What do they call those? Safety deposit Safety boxes. Deposit boxes. Um, they would go to their respective boxes and straighten out their tabs with each other. No one would worry about getting robbed because Raymond had the place under his protection for 30 years. No man in his right mind would rob Raymond or the mob. That's the part I wanted to read to you. That's so, what Gerard said. That's what Gerard said, yeah. yeah. So, so Raymond and the mob kind of protects this Hudson Furs where they store. It's like a cold storage for beautiful fur coats. And in the back or somewhere in the building was the candy box, was this place where safety deposit boxes were kept and mobsters, bad guys, gangsters, gamblers, bookies, they kept their money there. And that's what was robbed on August, on August 14, 1975. And a secret indictment, a secret jury, leads you to arrest in January of 1976. All of us. Now, the all of us. Let's Six get, of us got arrested. All right, so let's get to the all of us. The all of us is Gerald Jerry Tillinghast. Yep. Uh, hold on, I forget them. John Wimet, Charles Chucky Flynn. Yes. Uh, Jake Tarjan. Yes. Walter Wimet. Yes. Jake Tarjan. Oh, you forgot and Ralph, and Robert Ralph. Deuce Dussault. No, no, no. He wasn't there. It was. Uh... Well, yeah, he wasn't there. Why was he? Well, he wasn't there because he was. He was a rat. He was the rat. And you, you left out Skippy Burns. Skippy Burns. Yeah. And did you say Joe the dancer? Joe the dancer. <laughs> the way what happened was that, to, to what I know, what I and I was, mm -hmm. was Dusso was manipulated mm -hmm. by the state police, and they openly admitted they did it, mm -hmm. and they lied to him. Mm -hmm. uh, they said that uh, the guys in Rhode Island killed mm -hmm. Chucky. So mm -hmm. Chucky was supposed to be his best friend, so he got all fucked up. He turned around and said, then he started ratting on people. Huh. Then he turned around, I think he ratted on the guy Joe Denise. Uh -huh. They used to call him Joe the Dancer, I think. Why do they call him the Dancer? Because he liked to dance. How the fuck do I know? <laughs> but but anyway, so I really hope it was listen, because and I they arrested that. him, mm -hmm. so he became a coal stool pigeon. Huh. You know, he joined him because he didn't want to go to jail. Huh. You know. Yeah. So and that's and then between the two of them, they started now, mentioning everybody's names. Yeah. And uh, I think they mentioned my name because they were afraid they didn't want. Run into me afterwards if that would have been the case. What, were all of these people people that you ran with, no, like in your crew? None of them were. No, only uh, so you were lumped in with only these guys. Chucky, Skippy, Johnny, and Walter. Mm -hmm. uh, Jake Tajin. Mm -hmm. I didn't know him. You didn't know him? No, at all. First time I met him was in jail. Hmm. And uh, what the fuck else am I missing? Ch Johnny. Mm -hmm. Chucky, Skippy, me. Oh, me, okay. <laughs> Ralph Burns and Walter. Walter two, two omits. Yeah, Walter, Walter and John. John. Yeah. Um, Walter had a bad heart. Half the time, he didn't even go into court. He just sat yeah. back and he didn't give a fuck. Was he uh, indicted? Yeah, everybody was. It was in that courtroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, which ones went to jail for the heist? Uh, Johnny Romet, Ralph Burns, and Chucky Flynn. And they did uh, life? They got life. Oh. Then they fought it and fought it, and they got it knocked down to 35 years, I believe. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, Jake Tarzan, mm -hmm. myself, and Walter met. we were found not guilty. Not guilty. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you didn't do it. Absolutely. But you did spend eight months in jail awaiting eight, trial or eight, throughout the entire trial. Eight and a half. And in those eight and a half months, you spent a lot of time with those gentlemen. We walked... Every day we played cards all the time. We talked, and that was it. But we always sat alone, alone and away from everybody, because huh. when we talk, we don't want them just hearing what we talked. No matter what mm -hmm. it was we talked about. Mm -hmm. 
All right, on another another quick story. This is from The Last Good Heist, which is um, Tim White, Randall Richard, and Wayne Wister's book about the five. I don't even know Tim. Chapter seventeen. Jerry Tillinghast. Uh, I'm gonna do. I'm a big fan of. Uh, you listen to podcasts, Jerry? No, just mine. Just yours. Um, I listen to a great podcast um, about uh, uh, anyway called Hardcore History, and he does this quote. Jerry Tillinghast from Providence stops by the hideout. Okay, that's the first sentence of chapter 17. Jerry Tillinghast from Providence stops by the hideout. Now, did you really have a hideout? I didn't know. <laughs> or did they have a hideout? Possibly. A did hideout? You call them hideouts? No, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> Sounds a like hideout, you guys are in a club. A hideout mm -hmm. is like they live in a place or, or, or an apartment or a house or something mm -hmm. that. And nobody knows that you're there. Right. And then that's where you traffic back and forth with whoever's going to come by gotcha. to help you out with whatever you might need. Gotcha. That's, it's like when uh, Pony Boy Curtis uh, killed one of the socias. I don't know. In The Outsiders. Did you ever read The Outsiders? No. Did you ever see the movie? No. I wasn't interested in it. No. I heard about it. Yeah, yeah. You'd probably be a greaser. I don't think you'd be a soch. What's that? Hmm. What's hey, a greaser? Um... Grease was like, you know, like a tough kid. What's the social? From the streets. Soch is like prissy, like well to do. Well, I definitely would have those... been a greaser. Yeah, yeah. You would have beaten Beat up the social. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, I'm going to continue. Okay. Quote He is a good looking man. Right. Stands six feet, weighs a trim 225. Six one. Thank you. All right. His reddish brown hair is fashionably long, and his beard and mustache are neatly kept. He has broad shoulders. And big, unexpressive blue eyes. He doesn't talk much <laughs> because he doesn't have to. His presence is kind of brutality. His presence, I'm sorry. His presence is kind of a brutality. It intrudes on the room. He's a hard guy, a bone breaker, and at 29, a killer working on a major league record. Tillinghast is the youngest guy in Chucky's crew and probably the meanest. Only Flynn is tougher. All right, that's from... The last good heist. Now, we got to talk a little bit about that. What? First of all, there was someone tougher than you? I don't know. That's what he says. Flynn. Who's well, Flynn? Chucky Flynn. We're, Chucky bro Flynn. we're like brothers. Yeah, yeah but he wasn't know. tougher than you. Well, he was very tough. He was? How, the only way you find out, we don't fight with each other. You Neither. know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, we help each other. Yeah. A crew. You don't fight with each other to see who's tough for the run. It's not like a lion. I know that in my crew, we have a lot of those fights over who's tougher. Well... I can tell you, well, I can tell you why with your crew, but I'm not yeah. going to go in there. I'm not going to embarrass you. Yeah, don't embarrass me. No, because you hit each other let's, with um, curses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to some questions uh, real quick, and then uh, we should probably sell some uh, yeah. sell some of our, our advertising. Hey, so Battle Elf says, who was the toughest gangster you met? Hmm. Well, I... I it's hard to say, uh, mm -hmm. Battle Oak, because when, when I went to New York, I, I, when I was talking with, with Johnny, there was a bunch of guys around, but you never see them in action. They're like bodyguards. Mm -hmm. And around here, it's uh, the street guys, and uh, they're just literally, they're, they're tough guys all together, collectively. It's uh, like to say who was tougher than who, mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't be able to say that without tooting my own horn is mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. But... I'm not, they're my friends. We never fought with each other. We just respected each other mm -hmm. and we fought together. And when we fought together, no, nobody could beat us. Hmm. And I'm not just boasting. Ask people you might know from the past yeah. who had the best fucking crew and they're going to tell you Gerard. Nice. We're, all, we're all misfits, mm -hmm. you know, all different nationalities. Mm -hmm. So we're like dogs. <laughs> If I don't you, know if that helps you. If you played cards so much, how come you're not good? Well, last time we played, I beat him. That's probably why I sent that. Yeah, I think it will be. Don't stop being jealous, Kevin. I mean, that's not good. It's Kevin, not healthy. Kevin. You know? um, this one's a political question. Uh, hey, Jerry, is it true Nancy Pelosi's father was a member of the Lucci, Lucci's crime family? I don't know, but I, I think she was. Yeah. They used to mop the floor, hold her upside down, and use her face. Hey, geez. Just saying. 
Good evening from Kentucky. All right. Hello, Kentucky. The Mijo Fuji. Mijo Fuji. Muji Fuji. Muji the Muji Fuji. Fuji. That's cool. Oh, that's fun to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good uh, evening from Kentucky, guys. Glad to catch another live stream. Well, please. thank you. Thank, thank you. you for clicking. If you have any questions, hit us up from Kentucky. Yeah, if you got a question. You ever so, been to Kentucky? Uh, no. No. I have. So. I went to uh, the Mammoth Caves. They're um, a big cave. Uh, I heard. Maybe we can do a whole show on caves. They, they always said the bluegrass of Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know they always say that. Like yeah. especially when you go, I would have loved to go in for the races. Oh yeah, the quarter horses and the regular races. Can you go to the Kentucky Derby with me? We get tickets. Oh, if only if they lift the uh, COVID, and I can get a pass. I don't know. I just can't walk the fuck around anywhere I want, Kev. I would have been able to do that. Oh, you're, on mean, you're on parole, David. Yeah, you can't. You can't just leave the state. All right, gotcha. And that I and that answer. Donna, not a little. Yeah. Jerry, looking good. I believe you Thank are you, a honey. true, respectful, classy man. And I am. I try to be. Thank you. Uh, this is about my uh, reference to Pony Boy. I said that time, Pony Boy, and you were like, huh? Because you didn't read The Outsiders, um, which is a great book, by the way. And if you ever want to read a book. No. Oh, okay. Um, uh, this is a Giants hat. Go Giants. They won today. They are now eight. And four, I think. Who won? The Red Sox won? I don't know if the Red Sox won, but the Giants won today. Um, so, uh, oh, here we go. Uh, back in Kentucky, we have horse racing and bourbon. Good stuff. Yeah. That yeah, that's, uh, that's that's a classy situation there the, 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 yeah. the derby. It is the a Kentucky derby. Kentucky derby. And the yeah. mint julep. I watched that movie, uh, mm -hmm. Pretty Woman. You did, and they were at the at at, at a racehorse or a polo mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. And what happens was when the horses they uh, were riding and the grass and stuff would kick up, yeah, divots, yeah. And everybody went and put them on. They stepped on them after that and put them back in. Huh. Is that right? Huh? I'll have to ask that of our Kentucky friends. I've never heard of that before. Replacing the divots. Neither did I until I saw in the golf, movie, and I, I, and I would assume yeah. that it would be true. Why would you put something like that in the movie? If it's not true, you know? Yeah. Well, it's true that Julia Roberts was a prostitute as well, so. In the movie. Oh, not in real life? No. Mm -hmm. Well, not that I know of. Hmm. If she was, I'd like to get a shot at it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of shots, let's let's uh, pay the bills real quick. We're talking about uh, eating at Marchetti's first. Marchetti's, you go in there and it's uh, number one, have a good reception. Uh, the waitresses and waiters mm -hmm. are, are good. They know their job. They get here as soon as mm -hmm. they can. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you have to have patience. But the food is phenomenal, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't. Ninety percent of the time, you can't. You see people always taking home food they can eat it all. And, Famously large portions. Yeah, and uh, the prices are good. They're right on the money. I mean, it's a good atmosphere, and uh, yeah. you have to try it out just to see. Then let me know if, if I was right. There you go. Cat and Zaro food products two five five seventeen hundred. Everywhere you go, you're going to see Cat and Zaro food products. And Steve and his wife are two of the greatest people that I've ever run across in a long time. Mm -hmm. But they work hard and they put out different products mm -hmm. for like uh, sweets and, and, and mm -hmm. spaghetti Biscuits. sauce. And, and what tell you, I'll tell you one thing. Now they they have a new thing. It is for dog or pet food. Nice. And it's really supposed to be pretty good. My I dog loves them. I didn't try it. I just passed on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. stay, Steve. Yeah. Oh, and Harriet's. You and I just went to Harriet's not too long ago. Yeah, Harriet's is a... Uh, it's it's just good. everything's good. It's yeah. similar to Marchetti's. They give you such a good portion. Yeah. And the prices are very reasonable. And yes. uh, you know, the cook Mike, he 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 busts his ass back there. And Dawn, his partner, mm. uh, Debbie, my uh, good people. We had a good Louis's time. sister when we were there. Louis's wife's sister, Deb Dawn, she's good mm. too. Uh, so nice, great specials too. And then finally, last but not least, Amadeo Restaurant. Lounge. Amadeo, I I believe that I think he has maybe the best pizza in town. But he's got, he makes uh, tomato soup, mm -hmm. which is great. He makes uh, pasta and beans. It's, mm -hmm. it's phenomenal. And, and he has his own salad. You have your own well, salad. Yes, right? I do. When I was on my diet, which I'm back on it now, uh, it's called Jerry Salad. <laughs> so if you go in there and if you think you ate a salad, you got to wait till you try this one. <laughs> I Just, love that. Yeah. All right. So we're talking, uh, we're back on, uh, on Live with Jerry. We're talking about the Bonded Vault. And um, I wanted to read a couple other things to you uh, uh, get your opinion on them. So uh, here's what here's what the police alleged 
happened that evening. On Thursday, I mean, on that morning, eight men traveled in a van to Hudson for, for storage. Uh, we talked about who it was. Dusalt, Flynn, Denise, Tillinghast, Burns, Tarzian, Wemet, Wemet, and um, Dusalt, allegedly. Well, he was uh, supposed to be the one that went in. The only one. See, I got a... I got an opinion about that. Oh, I like this. I heard everything. Mm -hmm. I know everything that went on. Mm -hmm. And to me, mm -hmm. now they're on vacation. Mm -hmm. they don't Who's nobody, this? The people the, at, the, yeah, at the vault? Yes. And this is my, just my opinion, mm -hmm. right? They're on vacation. Yes. Now, if you're going to go in there, they're not going to let anybody in if they don't know them. Correct. Along comes do so. He goes in there. No mask or nothing like that. He has a briefcase with him, mm -hmm. and he talks to them, and they mm -hmm. let him in. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, he puts his briefcase on the counter. They say, well, it showed it anyway. They had a video on it on it. Yeah. And uh, he pulls out mask and pulls the gun out to say, you know, he tells them in there, if it's uh, mm -hmm. where's everybody, whatever the case is. But yeah. my thinking is this: you don't know the guy, mm -hmm. and uh, you let him in. He pretended he was a client, I believe. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. They know who their clients are. I imagine you would know who your clients are. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. doesn't matter. He would have said if they're on vacation, you don't do business. Yeah, unless it's a close friend, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So I think they were part of it. I think do you they think that orchestr helped orchestrate it. Oh, you I think, think it was they let him in. Job. Yeah, yes, I do. Hmm. Can't prove it, but I just because they're saying they quoted thirty mm -hmm. million dollars and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. And the guy said there was no fucking way near that. Something like ridiculous, so like they I'm took, think, yeah, they left I, bonds behind. What, what I think on. is they uh, went through it after it was all over mm -hmm. and embellished the price mm -hmm. for the insurance company. Now, when you were in, and jail, that's only my opinion. I don't know. For, how often did the trial uh, take place? Uh, was it every day, Monday through Friday, for eight? No, and a half the months? first four months were waiting trial. Yeah. The last four and a half months, every day we were going to trial. Now, were you you were at the ACI? Yeah. Was uh, Gerard there? No. No. Was he? Oh, he might have been in Walpole at that time. I don't know if he was even incarcerated at that time. I think he was incarcerated at that time. How do you know? Uh, from his book. Well, you should have got that fact before. I think he started. got beat. I think he got beat. <laughs> I think he got beat up pretty good. Uh, someone attacked him and broke his ankle. And during the bonded, bonded vault heist, he, he got out uh, and went to the hospital. Any of that ring a bell? No. No. Hey, so. Um, what do you mean you got attacked? At the ECI? Yeah. Here, here we go. Quote I was still in segregation for half killing the kid who broke my ankle that night in the yard. He was junked up and delusional when he attacked me, resulting in my being hospitalized for a week before returning to the pen. Uh, we all got, uh, in, while in the segregation unit, I had to get to the hospital. Uh, he paid him five hundred dollars. He paid the CO five hundred bucks to get him to the hospital, and then he said, uh, "That's when they met with Chucky Flynn." He says he had a meeting with Chucky Flynn. This is before the arrests. Oh, I don't know. He says that uh, he sent some people out to talk to Dusalt, who was out in Las Vegas. Well, that was Vegas. Uh, he went out with his money out to Vegas. Well. I believe it was Chucky. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it was. <laughs> Denise, or who mm. I don't know, but uh, they went out there, mm. and evidently they did talk to him. You did not go out there. No, you? I didn't go out there. I wasn't. I was. Uh, you were not. You had no part in this at all. No. Okay. They went out there and they went out there to kill him. Do so. From oh, what yes. I understand, and uh, because they figured he was going to give it up, mm -hmm. and Chucky went out there and he said, "Yeah, we talked to him, and I took his word for it that he's not going to be okay." Chucky, he, so okay, so Chucky gets Ch Chucky then goes out there, talks to Dusel, Dusel, right. comes back. Right, he went out there, he was supposed to, to report. Him. Okay, on uh, whose behalf? What? <laughs> I didn't hear that. What did he say? And, and who who told him to, to do that? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I, it might have been uh, Gerard, it might have been, I don't think so. But Someone I don't from know. the crew, it doesn't that matter who's involved. Told him to. yeah. yeah, okay, they go out there and say, Look, they're gonna rat this, that, and the other. So when Chucky went out there, talk to them, mm -hmm. and I mean. Mm -hmm. And he, Dussel assured him the way it went, allegedly, that he wasn't going to rat. So mm -hmm. when Chucky came back. Uh, Can you really trust someone in, 
among, honor among thieves if he's going to say, listen, I'm not going to rat. Can you really trust someone to? Oh, it depends. That's if, a big leap of faith. If you've been with Chucky. somebody and you commit a lot of crimes for, say, 20 years, mm -hmm. you've been in jail a number of times. In and, in and out with the same guy. In and crew. out with the same guy. And, he's, and he, he didn't say nothing. So you, you have to give it the. You think it was like uh, a, a moment between them, like deuce? Chucky. It could have been. I'm because, not going to. Right. They, because they, they, were they, they were tight. So at any rate, mm -hmm. uh, Chucky comes back. Mm -hmm. And he told me while I was in Casa, he said, yeah, he says, uh, I believe him. Hmm. Shortly after that. That's wild. See, I wouldn't have believed him. <laughs> no, no, shortly. Oh, this is, uh, so, yeah, shortly after that, they, everybody hmm. got arrested. Hmm. Now, what I liked in one sense and not to be self-centered or anything like that, but mm -hmm. the, the state trooper was Tony Mancuso and a few huh. others. They went out there to arrest Duso. So huh. Tony Mancuso told Duso mm -hmm. a, a story that everybody back in Rhode Island killed Chucky. Mm -hmm. And uh, he got all upset, allegedly, and then... Because they had a, a little interview with huh. with, with uh, Tony Man Mancuso, yeah, the, the second, the, the, I think it was a lieutenant at the time. Mm -hmm. They said, "Well, he says he told." They said, "Well, you like to do so." He said, "Yeah, I like to." That cracked me up. <laughs> That's just as bad as us, you know yeah. what I mean? When they want, they something, did whatever they, they could. Yeah, to and get. you can't listen. I'm not sticking Can up you for them. Do that? Huh? I don't know. It just sounds shady. Like you shouldn't. Yeah. Be well, able to look do at that. listen. They do. It's a. It, they they play their cards the same way people mm -hmm. play their cards. You know. Remember the premise is they're trying to do everything. But they have limited power. Trying to talk. Here? Yeah, sorry. They say they're trying. The mentality is trying to get us off the street. Mm -hmm. Our mentality is not to let that happen. Yeah. So. And and not, they, and fifty uh ninety eight percent of the time mm -hmm. we're gonna lose. Mm -hmm. For one way or another. I, you you knew you were going to win though in the bonded vault. You didn't even send your clothes. I I sent all my stuff out. To, they, they didn't even mention me. They didn't even call my fucking name right. You know what I mean? He says, <laughs> "Well, we always had a different car. I only had one fucking car." You mm -hmm. know, but uh, huh. and I think that's what it was mm -hmm. because they just you know. So and a lot of times they didn't even talk about me. Mm -hmm. We just said to me and Paul just sat back and mm -hmm. listened to them. You know, and uh. Want to take some more questions? Yeah. We'll pause there on the trial of the bonded vault in which Jerry Tillinghast was arrested for, charged with, and that must have been a lot of charges. 20 counts. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Was arrested and charged with 20 counts of various uh, charges. and uh, But you were found not guilty. Okay, let's go to... Um, Kevin, did you uh, did you get my text yesterday? Yes. Uh, let's see. I've seen some beautiful women in Rhode Island, but how do you get past their accent? Well, that depends. I mean, that's uh, like anything else. Mm. Where are you from? Maybe I personally like it when when uh, yeah, when, it's a, a, when listen, a woman talks with a Rhode Island accent. There are women. Uh, well, you know, I don't see nothing wrong with their accent. Yeah, it's uh yeah, we're, we're unique in our own way because yeah. that's been. Uh, delved in, delved into and studied by experts and stuff like that. <laughs> and Rhode Island is in a fucking island by itself. Yeah, we have our own different terminology <laughs> and uh, respect it and enjoy the company of the That's woman right. because uh, That's right. she earned it. She's a Rhode right. Islander. So yeah, enjoy. I think you lean into the accent personally. Yeah, learn it. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? If you, if you like the girl, compromise. Uh, back to battle, elf, Mister Tillinghast. Please do a graphic novel about your life. Graphic no. Can you draw? No. All right. We'll have to find someone to do that. I can draw a stick figure. Sox did win the first of two. They played a double header today. Uh -huh. That's it. Uh, from graph graphic novel to movie. All right. We have a fan. All right. How about this? Who would you want to play you in a movie? Now, before we get to that question, hold that thought. And before we get to Ash Dobbs, okay. There was a movie about the Bonded Vault. There was a movie. Called The Vault. Yes. What did you? Uh, let's get to that in a second. Yeah. Who would you want to play you in a movie? Not a Bond and Vault movie because you weren't there. I would. I don't know. Uh, and the movie wouldn't be about the Bond and Vault. 
No. It would be about my murder case right. and my history as being involved with organized crime. Yeah. Something to that effect. But mm. uh me. Yeah. I like to be uh, make me uh the yeah, we'll just do uh like uh like Scorsese did, uh where he made De Niro look real young again. We could just do that to you. Use Possibly, special but effects. I don't know. We uh friends of ours and stuff, we talked about it. Who would be good in mm -hmm. uh Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a. That would be. A, a, I don't know. What well, they would more or less have the. They Brad, would know Brad what Pitt they're doing. Something. You know. Uh, so speaking of that, uh, what was your favorite gun to carry as an enforcer? Allegedly. Well, let's. I wasn't an enforcer. Never got found guilty of being an enforcer. Mm -hmm. They always assumed it, but. Mm -hmm. Assuming choice of weapon that I like that is a 380 automatic. Mm -hmm. Why? Not much of a kick to it. Mm -hmm. It's lightweight and it shoots miniature forty-five rounds. I believe they are. Mm -hmm. That's been so long, but the stopping power. Plus, either, yeah, either hand, left hand, right hand, twenty-five, oh, yeah. to twenty-five yards. I'm putting it in your forehead. Oh shit! Yeah. Rifle or pistol, auto or revolver? What caliber? I mean, really like gun talk. Yeah. Rifle or pistol. Rifle, pistol, auto, or revolver, what caliber? I think you said it when you said 380 automatic. Yeah. Um, but well, listen, sure. all weapons are good. If you, if you become proficient at it, mm. it's always good to know about a lot of different weapons. Don't get stuck with just one. Mm -hmm. You told me once that you carried a weapon just for show. No. What do you mean? You, Put you, that back. You uh, What? What was your favorite gun to carry? As we we did already yeah, covered yeah, yeah. that one, yeah. Um, uh, did you ever have a Walter PPK three eighty? No. no. Um, uh, In Vietnam, yeah, I had a thirty eight stub nose, mm -hmm. and I had a nine shot twenty two long barrel pistol, mm -hmm. and other guys had them too. Mm -hmm. We were in Virginia, mm -hmm. and they would sell them right over the counter. Right over the car. So there happened to be uh, a Marine that came back from combat and stuff like that. He said, look at guys, extra power. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Feel secure. You know, you get the weapons. And I did. Mm -hmm. And a lot of guys did. Mm -hmm. you know, and I went in a platoon that I was in, mm -hmm. uh, in the company, uh, 1st Battalion, 7th Marines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think over half the fucking company had weapons outside of the regular mm -hmm. weapons that were, were assigned. Now, um, reason being yeah. is because if you get far enough away, mm -hmm. it's less likely to hear a gunshot than a rifle shot. Hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, 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 make an announcement. Or do you want to wait? Hold on. Tilling has this is from this is from the last good heist again, uh, and I quote: "This is just like hardcore history. I love it." Uh, Tilling has light specialty was shaking down unprotected bars. He'll walk in late on a busy night, quietly knock the bartender around and beat up a few patrons. It's all very fast, and considering the violence involved, pretty damned smooth. In and out in less than two minutes, no serious injuries, no major ruckus, and no outright police attention. After one or two visits, the owners pay him not to stop by. He's done prison time for assault and battery, then a stretch for conspiracy to commit murder. Those are the only the crimes he's been tagged for. Just a little background on on your uh, same same writers who called you uh, a shoe in for the Mob Hall of Fame, I believe. Tim. Yeah, Tim Tim White. Am I supposed to respond to that? Do you want to respond to that? Well, the thing of it is, I look at it this way: if you're getting involved in any job you do, mm -hmm. whether it's good, bad, or ugly, you, you do what you have to do to accomplish your emissions. Mm -hmm. So. You can't, in a sense, like if Vietnam would just say, we can't take no prisoners. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're involved in something like that and you're trying to do what you got to do, you're trying to impress people, you're trying to uh, frighten people, you're trying to do whatever you got to do mm -hmm. to get the money, then uh, that's the name of the game. Hmm. Only the strong survive in that game. Yeah. You glad to be out of that game? Oh, yeah. It was, you know, I, what the biggest thing is, uh, I was thinking on the way here, so peaceful that when i'm sleeping at night you know, i never got my door kicked in 
says I've been home by the state police or FBI wanting to arrest me for something down the fucking road. Mm -hmm. And it was just, uh, it's nice because I'm not doing nothing no more. Nice. I, uh, it's it, the way it is. I got different choices. I'm trying to reinvent myself yeah. and try to do the best I can because I have my family now and my grandchildren, mm -hmm. and that's all I want to do. I want to be around them. Let's get, to, was, let's get to one more question. That, that's really nice, and I think that's why it's important for people to hear your stories too. Uh, which is why we do this in, in the beginning. And we love your questions, so keep asking them. Um, um, we are going to take a quick break here, and uh, and we'll get back to some of these questions. There's a gentleman here who is you were in minimum security with that I want to get to. That also we have your perp walk of the week, which is very exciting. Yeah. Uh, last week we introduced the segment of perp walks, uh, where I have uh, been hunting down a collection of video of of you doing your perp walks. But before we do that, let's talk about our favorite restaurants in reverse order. This is Amadeo Restaurant and Lounge, 383-3800. Amadeo, Amadeo. I think you got the best pizza in town. Everything that you order is good. It's all good. Mm -hmm. And uh, the cooks, are, they're, they're, they're phenomenal. They're great. And the prices are good. Amadeo, Amadeo, Amadeo. All right, eat at Harriet's, 942-9534. Again, Breakfast open from one to two. Breakfast and all day. I too. don't. Mm, mm, I haven't found a better place to have breakfast mm, mm, yet, and their home fries are off the charts. Outstanding. Chops. Now, when you think home fries, I sometimes I think of crunchy and small, but these are potatoes. Oh, well, you got them. You They're know. really delicious. Uh, they do them right at uh, at Harriet's. Uh, Cat Nazaro food products. They're the best. I mean, husband and wife, you won't find better people, but and their products are all over the place, mm -hmm. and it's you. You get the sauce. You see the products in the markets. Mm -hmm. Buy it. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be dissatisfied. You're going to feel very good that I, you listened to me and you bought it. Yes, Google that. Cat Nazaro food products. Yeah. Find their website. And then, last but not least, certainly in the height of Knightsville. I mean, in the in the in the heart of Cranston, in the Knightsville uh, area. Listen, uh, Marchetti's as a as a as a full dining uh, restaurant. Uh, I don't think there's a better place. I don't think you go downtown. You know, what you do when you go downtown, yeah, they look nice. It's that you don't get a third of what you get, and they got a, the prices are fucking astronomical, <laughs> and uh, there's no reason to. It used to be good up the hill. It's not anymore. There's only a couple of spots up there. Mm -hmm. uh, but Marchetti's is, uh, to me, is the place to go, and mm -hmm. you try it out. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, you know? I agree. Not that I would give a fuck because <laughs> I like it. So, uh, you know. You can go fuck yourself. Yeah, really. All the joints we had, if you don't like them, I don't. don't I like this it. battle elf because she's feeling me. She's feeling me. Rock me, Amadeo. All right. So, uh, okay. I know it's a girl. It's a guy's picture. Could be. Uh, hey, Jerry. My name is Ron Homer. We were in minimum together when minimum and work release were together. Glad you're well. Thank you. Nice. That was a good stop back in the day. Yeah. Minimum security. We got away with a lot. <laughs> Wait, didn't you escape minimum security? There's no word for the escape. No, I didn't escape. Yes, I, you did. I did not. Yes, I, you did. You and no. your brother escaped. That jail. wasn't. That was. It was in the newspaper. Yeah, it, it was, but we didn't escape. We just took a walk and checked out the area, and they couldn't find us, so they oh, thought we escaped. Oh, what, what do you mean? <laughs> that was at a. Uh, Sounds like we, escape. we manipulated a religious retreat that got us out for the day. We lived off West Friendship Street. My mom, Estelle Ambrosia, said hello. Hi, Estelle. My wife grew up in Pawtucket. Was it rough over there back in the day? Pawtucket? That's like coming from one socket. The bucket. Yeah, Pawtucket. Uh, listen, don't get me wrong. There's some good people out of Pawtucket, but nobody wanted to go to Pawtucket. <laughs> that's, that's, Does anyone want to go to Pawtucket I'll tell you now? what, though. It's good for, for business, but what would amaze me is I don't know if it's the main street, Dexter Street, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You go down, there's a bar on every corner on each side of the street. Mm -hmm. And they're always busy. Hmm. So that would mean that Pawtucket got a lot of alcoholics, maybe. Maybe. Or at least it's a good place to go. No, I it's a, yeah, I, I wouldn't live in Pawtucket. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> you asked. Was it rough then? Rough, I don't know. I didn't uh, hang there. I don't know. Where did you hang? Well, wherever I felt like it. I wasn't in any one particular place other than. Michael's Lounge. That was my friend's bar, and I went there. And, yeah. Uh, Michael's Lounge. Yep. No Absolutely. longer there, unfortunately. No. Also, no pictures of the place ever. No, and, but that was that was the best spot I do. After hours, mm. people used to come there from all over the place. Hmm. Yep. 
So I wanted to bring up something about the, uh, we're, we're talking here tonight about uh, the bonded vault case. Uh, Hudson Fur was the name of the place, 110 uh, Hudson Street in Providence, Rhode Island. And in August of 1975, um, it was robbed, uh, a place called the Bonded Vault, which is where a number of mobsters and uh, heavily protected uh, uh, bad guys kept their money and it was robbed. Uh, and, and a lot of people say it was the like the greatest robbery in the history of New England. Some people say, uh, talk a little bit about the wild differences in what was what people say was stolen. Some people say it was millions and millions and millions. Other people say it wasn't really that much. Well, they got the, even, even Dussault said it on the interview. Mm -hmm. Them guys got I, whatever it was, five, six people. They got seventy-four thousand dollars each. That was it. Seems like a they lot. said uh, they took the bag of stuff, and, and all the jewelry and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, went and uh, nobody got anything from it. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. that's still uh, that's a far cry from what they said. Mm -hmm. You know. And, that, and, and there was and, one witness who uh, said that she was able to see, recognize two people uh, because they didn't wear a mask. Well, Dussault didn't wear a mask, and, and Flynn was the other one Chucky, that was identified. Chucky felt bad. One of the, the, one of the women was kind of all shook up and like that, so he got her some water and stuff to calm her down. Huh. That's what he said. Yeah. I was in the trial. Yeah. Um, your sister, who actually just said XO, she was like 16, 17 at the time, and I love her too, sis. I understand that she protested during the We were trials. on trial, and her and my brother Bobby, he's mm -hmm. passed away, mm -hmm. got a hold of a lot of, uh, what do you call it there, the mm -hmm. stock, stockade, where you put your hands in it in your head. Oh, yeah, yeah. And okay. uh, it was put in the back of a truck, mm -hmm. and... My brother, one of my brother's friends, oh, my brother, they put their head in this and they had a sign, a sign on it says, hang the bonded vault defenders now because they're not getting a fair trial. Huh. And my sister, the they court, had about 30. Outside the courthouse? Yeah, they had about 30 friends. My sister, my brother, they all considered that. That was nice. Yeah. Is that how they, they so you, that you felt as though you were wrongfully accused? Of course I was. And that's how everyone felt? And the jury, well. You always feel you're innocent. You yeah, know what that's I mean? True, but that's true. The and prison is filled with a lot the jury of felt people. I was innocent too. So where do you go from there? Mm -hmm. But the cops, they don't, they didn't care. Hmm. They said, "Well, you just got lucky. We're gonna get you." You know. Mm -hmm. But so it is what it is. It's the way the game's played. What, did uh, your family uh, go to the trial every day? No, not every time? day. You didn't have to. I talked to yeah. them. They come to visit me. I said, Look, don't, you know, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Don't go yet. I can't talk to you anyway. And but if they go, they go. And they went a lot, you know. But mm -hmm. let's show everyone. Uh, let's get into your perp walk of the week. Perp walk of the week. Okay, so uh, this is the one I got in slow mo too. <laughs> you notice I was glancing at the, at the. You always seem to know where the camera is. Here's perp, here's slow mo perp walk. You seem to be leading that guy in. Yeah, well, yeah, one of you got to be going ahead, so mm -hmm. that guy didn't want to be seen either. <laughs> oh, we, you go, always uh, you always dressed up. You yeah. always dressed up for court. Yeah. Well, when we had uh, we had Bill on, uh, Bill Balkin, uh, we had a, a lawyer on. He that's what he told us. He told mm -hmm. us to make sure you always dress up for court. Yeah. That was important to you. Yeah. For that whole trial. Well, what I did, I don't know, did you see? I think, and people should pay attention to this for a minute. Uh, if you're going to court and you're on trial and you have a, a jury mm -hmm. and the guys are wearing casual clothes or mm -hmm. close trim beard, or you, know, you should emulate that because that way they feel more like they can identify with you. You're, you're trying to be the average guy that you mm -hmm. are. And if they're wearing sweaters and ties, well, you wear a suit coat and a tie. Mm -hmm. If they're wearing regular casual clothes, mm -hmm. well, wear casual clothes. It, it, to me, it's a psychological thing. Hmm. You know, you dress the way they dress, they kind of feel like they want to just uh, can identify with you or really, maybe a little more compassionate. That's I actually really good advice. Um, 
you know, so you're saying dress you dress appropriate for court, but also take a look at the jury. Right. And you know, so when you first go them. and when you first start, you don't know who your jury's gonna be. Mm -hmm. Then we go to interview do off raw there. Yeah. We pick the jury. Jury gets there, they come in, they make an impression. Some of them are dressed up, some of them aren't. Mm -hmm. So when they sit in here on our first day, we come in and we're gonna file motions and stuff. And uh I I, I always watch the jury. Huh. Yeah. Well, I don't, well, I don't know the judge, who, who the judge was. Mm -hmm. I I know uh the cops, so mm -hmm. what do I have to look at them for? <laughs> yeah, so and I saw the people in this sitting back mm -hmm. when you come up. No. Did you ever take there. the stand? Yeah, a couple times. Different th different cases though. Did you take you not in bonded vault? You didn't take the stand no. in bonded vault. Interesting. All right, so we've got some I don't think uh, I did anyway. But. We've got some comments on uh let's just take a look at it real quick. Uh it's the perp walk again. We're talking about the fashion now. All right, so we're talking about the fashion here. We got a uh, boot cut bell bottom blue jeans that is one hell of a nice looking pair of boots you had on there jerry oh they were good yeah. i like them they're very comfortable they were nice you know so but thank you so did you uh how did it work you did you, back you didn't have all that stuff in jail with you this is one hell of a nice looking pair of <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have that stuff with you in jail right oh i i can what happens is you have a place where you keep your clothing Oh. So if when my wife for the drop, whole trial, for my wife drops clothes off, mm -hmm. or anybody else said they take them, put a tag on them, and they put them in like in the back where they hang all your stuff coming in. Mm -hmm. So when it comes time, you go in there, and then they let you go in and pick out what you want to pick out, wear what you want to wear. Okay, don't mean to interrupt, but I have a question. So in the courthouse, there's a sec, a, a place where you get ready for no. the trial. No, no, at the prison. Oh, it's at the prison. Yeah, and then you're escorted to the courthouse. Yeah, but you're all dressed up. Right. Did others not dress up? Yeah. Others that you were with? Yeah. I wasn't worried about what others did. Mm -hmm. I heard you had a mistrial because your sister or something was on the jury. Doesn't get more Rhode Island than that. No, I my sister was never on the jury. And uh, I don't. That is a pretty Rhode Island thing to do. Though. Yeah, but I don't believe I got a, a mistrial on, on anything because that would mean no, we didn't. went through the whole trial. And then something took place. Mm -hmm. We should have got a mistrial a number of times because of what the police did. They mm -hmm. called in and said, bomb threats. Everybody's got to. They did that to intimidate the jury. Hmm. That's what they did that for. And in the front. This row, is during Bonded Vault? Yeah. A couple times. You know, huh. But, I and I used to get up and I'd make comments on it. Huh. I told the judge, uh, you don't control this car room. Oh, yes, I do. I know you don't. They, they, the state police takes you home, brings you back every day. These people there, they sit out there, they protect you. Hmm. I said, you got to tell me you, you don't run this car room. <laughs> yeah. I said a few things that. Uh, yeah, I've read some. That, they said that um, that court case was one of the most expensive court cases in oh, yeah. uh, Rhode Island history. Yeah. For the state. I think question. at that time it was well over a million dollars. Wow. Did, did each individual. Um, a uh, person who is uh, on trial had their own uh, uh, lawyer? Yeah. You had your own lawyer team? Yeah. Were you in cahoots with the other people? No. They had their Did own you team. trial separately? No, we trialed all together. Hmm. Interesting. That was all that we tried to get separate trials. but I'd love to see footage from that trial. Yeah, I wonder they if it exists. Not. Hey, do you know anything about this? This is a good question. Do you have any insight on the Gardner Museum robbery of the 90s? There's a Netflix documentary about it right now. Do you know that robbery? No. I was in jail. It's true. You were in jail. Sorry, he was in jail in the '90s. But the Gardner Museum, uh, the art was was stolen. I, I might robbery. have heard of it, but I just can't remember it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, robbery wasn't really see insane. anything that happens outside of jail. We always find out one way or the other. We had a better, hmm. uh, what would you call, grapevine? Yeah. Than they did. You know, sometimes in jail. We, yeah. We, huh. Sometimes we would tell them what what the, predict a little bit of the future based on what we mm. told. This might happen here. You know, you got to be mm. careful. And sure enough, mm. you know, it, it did. You know. Yeah, you. So I'm always fascinated by. Um, you know me. I'm always asking questions about what you did in jail because it seems like a lot of downtime. But you always say you watch movies, which uh, every so often uh, the offices. We had um, uh, movies set up. That the movies went to everybody in the prison. 
how they had it lined up. Oh, and, the uh, channel? Yeah, you go to a certain channel and it plays the videos. They would bring videos in of fights and all that stuff. So, oh, wow. You know, yeah, on the weekends. It was pretty good. Did you get newspapers or how often? Oh, come? yeah. I used to watch TV, the news, mostly the news. I got yeah. newspapers. I did everything I could to stay up to current events. Hmm. My friend Michael would come up and I'd ask him mm -hmm. a thousand, what this, that, that, and the other. And he would tell me that's changed, that changed, or that's okay. Hmm. And that just helped me just keep my mind focused on what I was going to go back to. Sure. You know? And then, of course, you and I have always talked about, I really want to do a series of videos of you and I playing uh, board games. I never said that. You did. Because Don't ignore it's it. true. I did, I did say that. Yeah. But I'm hoping that you'll agree to it. Because uh, I've, I've had... I don't... If anybody out there thinks that we should be sitting here playing fucking Monopoly when, when there's nothing else yeah. going on, just to show people we can yeah. play Monopoly, like no, because you millions play, of other people do. No, you play those games unlike anyone I've ever seen before. You Doesn't know, matter. You're so into them. And well, you're I so had enough time to practice. <laughs> it's you know? true. It's true. <laughs> but what was your favorite game to play in prison? Uh, let me see. Hmm. Mousetrap? No, not yet. I don't play that. What the fuck is that? Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I can't remember the name of it. It's uh, about the where the World War II. Oh, Axis and Allies? Axis and Allies, yeah. No, we shit. got so good at that, we created our own scenarios. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and what it was, and uh, we had nothing better to do, so we attack everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, We'd be partners, and we get everybody else, and we turn on each other. So that's the game. It's kind of like like risk on drugs. It's like real involved. Yeah. You, you you can be Russia. You can risk be Risk is good. Risk was good because you yeah. it's a, a little different. Yeah. Because you had cards, you could draw a card to let you look in the other guy's hand to see what he might have. What do you mean? A risk. Yeah. How did you cheat? Well, I can't tell you how I did it. I just oh. did it. Oh, oh, we oh. all did it. Don't get, don't. Oh, is there a lot of cheating in, in jail and at yeah, games? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Was there ever money on them? Imagine there was. Yeah. Trade things. Yeah. What was the hottest commodity in jail? Like what was something that when you when you got it you made sure you treasured it? Oh, well, it would be nothing that special that you'd want to treasure it. But oh. I think the hottest thing was hmm. keeping your mind occupied. Yeah, uh, because a lot of distractions are jail. People always come up to you, hmm. hey Jerry or hey Bob, hey Fred, hmm. what's this? Hmm. With they talk about different problems and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you got to really keep your mind focused on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not always going to be. You get tired of doing this or tired of doing that, but yeah. you have to keep your mind focused. Yeah. Read everything. Write. Learn everything you can. Go to that library, the law library mm -hmm. in jail, guys. You're going to learn. So mm -hmm. uh, that's the whole premise of it. Yeah. You know, if you come out, knowledge is power. You know and you learn and you read, you come out, you're going to be better than that guy that's sitting on the fucking bench mm -hmm. waiting to play basketball and nothing mm -hmm. better to do. Mm -hmm. You know? Don't you, waste your time. You've got valuable time in there. Use it. Get involved with the programs, whatever they might fucking have. I don't know. Mm -hmm. They were never very good at having good programs anyway. Once they stopped the Pell Grill, the Pell, uh, mm -hmm. the Pell Grants, uh, that's just like that That screwed everybody. But mm. but you got to just keep going. Yeah. It's good advice. Keep your mind. Let them have your body. Keep your mind. Don't give me your mind. You know? Well, I mean... That's pretty much, uh, unless there's something else you want to talk about. Seven minutes off. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much all I had for you for tonight, you know, before we get too more too much involved in. Uh, I have a, We have a video coming out about the Bonded Vault as well. Um, we can you talk talked about the movie Vault. I did talk a little bit about the Vault, yes. Sucked. Yeah, I did not enjoy it as much as I thought I would. I uh, like the opening sequence. Uh, quite a bit. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It was all right, you know. But the number one uh, thing was uh, they had to do a lot of ab libbing. Yeah. With that, because they put characters in it that was never there. Yeah. You know, they shot people, which never happened, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. They had to embellish it to make to, it more Hollywood. To make it more Hollywood, mm -hmm. and uh, I saw it. Listen, I, I I I watched it at the premiere, and I uh, I think his name was Danucci, the director. Danucci, yeah. Tom, and he Tom came Danucci. up to me at the end. I was leaving. He said, I need to know you're the only one left alive with that. How did it was it? And I said, it was very entertaining. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I lied. Oh, you did? Yeah, well, 
I'm going to tell you something. Well, it was entertaining. I mean, yeah, I no, I, I, I say that being thing. facetious, yeah. but uh, because it was so far mm -hmm. off the hook based on what I knew and what was told, that mm -hmm. they just uh, they just blew it a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, don't get me wrong here, and I'm not trying to be a racist, but I'm going to tell you like it is. There was no black people at all with the crews. Mm -hmm. They said that. Uh, do so picked the, the black girl up and he was robbing a jewelry store and he picked her up in there and then they went to Vegas. Mm -hmm. Didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Do so went to Vegas, met a dancer, a showgirl, and told her that could this all come out in the trial. He told her that he was very important and very uh, respected and people and they were looking for him because we, he did a big robbery. Mm -hmm. Now, in the meantime, he was very bad. He was a drunk and he wanted to hit women. So he hit her, slapped her around, and she just couldn't take it no more. So she called the cops on him, and that's how he got arrested. And when they turned around, oh, and then he, he ratted, and then he ratted, yeah. And uh, but there was no. I in the movie there was uh Buddy Roxbury, the black guy. Hmm. There was no fucking Buddy Roxbury. Anyway. <laughs> he was he was the first one they killed. I think mm -hmm. afterwards he got out. Uh, because what happened with that was we were on trial and. Jake Tajan, not a bad guy. I, I liked him, but he used to say things all the time off the wall. And he'd say bad things about decent people, hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Like, uh, I, just I, I, yeah, I told him, I said, listen, Jake, you got to shut the fuck up. You're going to get out and you can run your fucking mouth. Next thing, somebody put five in your fucking head. Jesus Christ. Four months later, they found him dead. Hmm. Yeah. And I, I don't think it was a bad thing because he was an asshole. I thought he was a good guy, but he wasn't. Huh. Was and as far as anybody, it's a, I, I think that... All the rest are dead. Everyone else involved in that in that trial are yeah. all deceased. Yeah, all the ones that we all got charged. There was other people who got charged, but after the case was over, they mm -hmm. ran into... They got, the, they got arrested or something like that, and they made different deals because they had less involved, whatever the case might have been. But mm -hmm. there was five or six or several of them stand up fucking guys, good guys that are out there now, and you go, guys. Huh. You know? Yeah. I gotta give them the... Pro I don't want to mention their names because eh, yeah, that's gonna put an unnecessary hmm. heat on them. Yes. But they're out there and, and... Hashtag unnecessary heat. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, Jerry, for sharing that with me tonight. Um... That is the bonded vault. Yeah. I guess if there's any other questions, we can take a, a couple last questions here. Uh, hey, Dave, are you related to the guy in extreme Nuno Betancourt? Uh, I am not. He must be my brother from another mother, but we are not related, and I cannot play guitar. No. Um, I was just say, what's that? The deal? What is that? Extreme? About? Yeah. They're a rock and roll band. Yeah, he definitely can't play. You don't, time. yeah. You don't. He want sucks to, at that. Don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't even think he can play drums. I don't know. Maybe I can play drums. Probably not, though. I don't think he can play a bongo. No, I don't know. Let's just take one last look at the perp walk of the week. Oh, good looking bastard, man. Here. Nobody <laughs> perp walks like Jerry Tillinghast. Who's in shape? Uh, every time, you know, I'm not being an asshole or self self centered, but every time I always look. The camera straight in the face, and that's what you do because that shows them they got to think mm. about it. Here it is: you got a guy who's charged his, his light behind the line, and he's looking right in your face, <laughs> and he's smiling to the camera. Do it, yeah, I, yeah. But I think I think that's important to do because you will you hide it. Fuck that shit. Everybody knows anyway. Why are you hiding your head? Mm. I think what it is is you walk tall, walk like a man. That's all. Um. Walk like a man. Let's go out like that. Hey, so uh, next Wednesday we'll be live again. I don't know what will be the case, uh, what we're up to next Wednesday, but I'm sure you'll let me know soon. We have Stephanie on. I don't know. Well, she's we'll having see. surgery, so she wants to wait to. That was Stephanie Bono. So it's a beautiful girl, great girl, got a big fucking heart, and mm -hmm. she's got MS. Mm -hmm. And of all the people who got afflicted with that, mm -hmm. that was a shame. But she's was going to be here tonight. But she ha has to go into surgery, mm -hmm. and she thinks after when she comes out, it might be also just important to let her know what they did, how they did it, and how she felt like anybody else. You wonder about this, you wonder about that. Like, I need two knee re uh, replacements. Hmm. I'm not going there because I don't know them. You know, it's like you're almost like you're afraid to do it, 
hmm. because you don't know what everybody does something different. One guy comes out, he's walking the next day. Another guy comes out, he's in a wheelchair. Hmm. Uh, it's it's a risky game to play, hmm. you know. But I told him, well, if I'm in a wheelchair, at the end of the day. You can do any kind of surgery you want. Either I'm going to walk, I'll be back in the two inches. Nothing's going to change. Mm -hmm. Love. <laughs> All right. Well, well, hopefully we'll see her next week then. Uh, love the prep walks. Yeah. Vintage Jerry. Thanks again, guys. Have a great week. And Thank you for tuning in. This show is a new Wednesday night fixture of mine, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks for calling me a gentleman. That makes me feel good. I don't think he meant you. All right. Hey, hey. Uh, well, thanks, Jerry. We'll see you next week, everybody. Bye.